What unsolved mystery gives you the creeps? Don't forget to like and subscribe and follow if you enjoy the video. Account 1. A guy I knew was found dead in his apartment. The police said he was attacked and had been murdered. A few weeks later, they say it was an error and it was suicide. He was dating this girl, who was the daughter of the sheriff the next county over. They argued a lot, and she would tell him things like, if you died, no one would know who killed you, and other creepy stuff to scare him. She was a psychopath, and apparently would hit her previous ex-boyfriends, and possibly even him, he never would tell us though. He was not suicidal, and he died just a few days after breaking up with her after a big argument. I spoke to the police about him and his girlfriend's behavior, and they told me nothing could be done since the case was closed. Account 2. In France, we have the Gregory Affair. A mother goes get her four-years-old boy at the childminder, once at home lets him play in the front yard while she does some laundry. Fifteen minutes later, the boy is missing. Someone calls the boy's uncle and tells him, I have taken the boy, and says he lies dead in the river. The boy is found dead hands and feet tied at the bottom of the river nearby. The whole investigation is a total clusterfuck, during which various members of the family are accused at some point, culminating with the boy's father killing one accused member of the family with a shotgun. The case was reopened last year because of additional information, then the man who was the judge at the time committed suicide. We still don't know who did it. Account 3 the disappearance of the Island Moor lighthouse keepers. The scene found by the people that went to check why there was no response was quite standard, yet slightly off. Two of the three waterproof jackets were missing, and in the kitchen they found pretty much everything normal, except that one chair laying on the floor, and there was still a meal on a table, suggesting that maybe they left in a hurry. The light keepers were nowhere. The only clues that were gathered came from the lighthouse's log. The entries the last few days there were written were weird. Severe winds the likes of which I have never seen before in 20 years. The log attendant, Thomas Marshall, wrote also noticed that James Duckett, the principal keeper, had been very quiet and that the third assistant, William MacArthur, had been crying. What is strange about the last thing is that William MacArthur was a seasoned mariner and was known on the Scottish mainland as a tough guy. Storm shouldn't have been a big deal. Entries the day later stated that the storm was still raging even worse than before, and that the lighthouse keepers had been praying for it to stop. BTW, the lighthouse that was 150 feet above sea level, and not only they should have been perfectly safe, but they should have known that. They were very experienced. The thing is that no storms were reported in the whole area in any of the days close to the entries. The weather was calm. The final log entry was made the day after. It said storm ended, sea calm, God is over all. Account 4. Disappearance of Asha Degree. Nine-year-old girl packs a backpack and leaves her home between midnight and 5 a.m. during a storm. Several motorists see her along a highway. There is evidence of her in a nearby barn. Her backpack is found over a year later wrapped in plastic buried at a construction site. She's never been found. What bothers me about this one is I suspect she was quietly communicating with an adult who was pretending to be her friend. I get that haunting if only I was just there feeling with this mystery more than most. Account 5. There was this mystery show where they did two fake stories and one real one. They would reveal the true story at the end of the show. One episode had a story where a child was afraid of his closet and wouldn't go near it and complain about hearing noises from it to his parents. One day, his older brother and a friend locked the boy in the closet. The kid was kicking and screaming, trying to get out, but then he went silent. The brother opened the door, and the boy was gone. There was nowhere for him to escape the closet, though. They revealed that this was the true story for the episode. Edit, the show was beyond belief, fact or fiction. Account 6. In the 1980s, over a period of 17 months, Japan was held in the grip of terror by just such a powerful criminal force. The case would turn the country on its head, push police to their limits, dispel the notion that Japan was a completely safe place, and 30 years later remains just as unsolved and mysterious as it has ever been. This is the story of the notorious monster with 21 faces, 
an organization led by an enigmatic figure which proved to be just as untouchable and elusive as any supervillain, which led the police on an unprecedented manhunt and whirlwind investigation for a crime they would never get to the bottom of, and which has gone on to become one of the most puzzling unsolved crimes in Japanese history. Unable to capture the suspect, believed to be the mastermind behind the monster with 21 faces, the police superintendent Yamamoto of Shiga Prefecture committed suicide by self-immolation in August 1985. Account 7. There may be a serial killer currently targeting young men in their early 20s in the Boston area. They go missing after a night drinking and end up in the Charles with a puncture wound from a needle. The police haven't released any other details, and this has been going on for years. Edit. As to the needle mark, I'm currently going to school in the Boston area for criminal justice, and a lot of my professors are Boston police, prosecutors, and they often hint at foul play, and one time in class, a Boston police officer slipped the mention of a needle mark in most cases. I know that's not the most reliable source of info, but that's all I got. He also mentioned the police are keeping most of the details from these cases from the public so they don't start a panic and that it won't interfere with their investigation. Account 8. This young lady has been missing over 20 years. Every day on my way to work, I see the flyers her family still puts up, begging for information. She was last seen less than 15 minutes from where I live. Once found the rib bone from a large goat while we were digging out a portion of the basement. The house had been added onto. This section of basement had once been part of the old barn. Still get the heebie-jeebies whenever I have to dig anywhere on the farm. Account 9. Solved, but really creepy. I just watched a show about this woman that was kept in a coffin-sized box for 23 hours a day for seven years. It was called Kidnapping of Colleen Stan. She was brought out for an hour a day to be raped by a couple. The coffin was kept under a bed. She said it was like a hundred degrees in the box. It was hard to breathe in the box. These people put her in the box, put it under a bed, shoved a bunch of crap around it, and then slept on the bed. 23 hours a day? In a wooden box? Under a bed? The guy actually took her home to visit her parents after a few years. They told the parents that they were engaged. Parents even took a photo of them. Then she went back to the box. The wife eventually helped her escape after raping her for seven years. The wife was jealous of her, thought the husband was in love with her. Apparently, she went on to get an accounting degree, married, and have a daughter. While also setting up an organization to help abused women with the guy's wife, who ultimately turned the husband in. How the fuck did this lady end up normal? Account 12. I know this is a really shitty description, but in the early 1900s, pretty sure, an entire family was murdered in their farm. Weeks before this, the maid complained about mysterious happenings around the house, and footprints were found in the snow leading into the woods. Also, two days after the date, investigators said they were murdered. Neighbors said there was smoke coming from the chimney edit. The Hinter Kaifek murders. Account 13. For many decades, there was only one hospital in the area I grew up their closest competition about a half-hour drive away. For about 20 years, they've had a reputation for screw-ups and questionable patient deaths. Both as a patient and being there for family members, I've had multiple experiences that made me agree with that reputation. Several years ago, there was a big to-do, as someone was murdered there. Their killer got past security after visiting hours, bypassed all medical staff, and then suffocated their victim with a pillow. The body was found with the pillow still over the victim's face, a fact the police reported in an interview on the case. Time passes, and new reports come up that the victim was strangled with cords in their hospital room, then the pillow was placed over the face. A few days after that, there's a new report. There was no murder, it was an accident where the bedridden victim somehow found the strength to get up, gather the cords in the room, then pull them tight enough to choke themselves to death. And now there was no mention of the pillow the police noted as being there. The media dropped the story immediately after that last report, with no questioning about the changes in the report. On top of that, if you try and search online, the local TV stations seem to have totally scrubbed their old reports, except for one 
which has the accident version of the story and nothing else. About 20 years before this, I got to witness a similar change in the facts regarding the reports of a fellow who died because it looked bad for his employer that his death was because he did something stupid while looting. I honestly think the hospital used its clout to force the local media to bury their original reports and go with the accident theory so as not to get a worse reputation. I really feel like someone got away with murder in part due to them wanting to protect the brand image. Account 14. Tamam Shud or Summerton Man. Just really bizarre and creepy, it's got an X-Files vibe to it. TLDR, well-dressed athletic guy is found dead leaning against a seawall on an Australian beach. No cause of death is discovered despite autopsy. No ID, no labels on any of his clothes, nothing to identify him, but a scrap of printed paper saying Taman Shud found in his pocket. No one is reported missing. Later, a briefcase is found in a locker at a train station attributed to him, with a few clothes marked T. Keen. No one named that is found missing. When the info about the note is released, one of the locals finds an odd book in the back seat of his car in the area that the man died in. The piece of paper matches the torn-out bit in the book. In the book, there is a very odd cipher that no one has been able to decode since, and a phone number. Blood pooling in the body suggests he didn't die with his head propped against the wall as he was found. Half-smoked cigarette found fallen out of his mouth, but if he died in a different position, would be a little odd. Body was embalmed and put on display for six months and received a lot of attention, but no one can remember having seen him. No family or anyone knowing him have ever been found. Tamam Shud roughly means the end times. Tamam Shud or Summerton Man. Just really bizarre and creepy, it's got an X-Files vibe to it. Account 15. When hundreds of people reportedly saw and many recorded all those UFOs in the sky over the American Southwest. Edit, Phoenix AZ 1997. I legitimately saw them with my own eyes. I lived in Phoenix at the time and was out driving around with some friends, totally not smoking pot. But those lights were unmistakable, a triangle of lights. I told my mom the next day and she thought I was mental until the story broke. Stoner me was vindicated. The thing that gets me is that the governor of Arizona at the time gave a real press conference addressing the sighting, and in the middle of it, dudes in alien costumes stormed the stage and basically turned it into a joke. And the government laughed it off with no explanation.